Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the array method reduce and hopefully build up some intuition so that you can use it in your own code. One of the assumptions I'm going to make about you is that you already understand some basic JavaScript and at least understand some basic ES6 style functions. So let's take a quick detour before we do anything else and try to build up some of the intuition for what a reducing function is. So I'm going to write a quick function called add. You probably know what this is going to do. It's going to take an x and a y, and it's going to return the result of x plus y. So another way to look at this function is that we take one or more things, and that we simplify the result. In fact, if we look at a perspective shift here, we take a perspective shift, we can rewrite this function. So let me go ahead and comment that out. And let me just rewrite this. So you've noticed that I've renamed some of the parameters. I've called the first one accumulator and the second one value. Now this idea of an accumulator comes up all the time in programming. And so we can think of this as a starting point. We want to have something to begin with and we want to combine in some way another value. So here we have this binary operation add and we're combining accumulator with value. So as I said, the concept of an accumulator comes up all the time in programming. And in fact, this add function, you can think of as returning a new accumulator. I can prove it to you. If I call this function add with the result of an add function to another number, this is going to give us a new number, where the accumulator was the result of calling add the first time here. This concept of carrying over some accumulator is important, not only for reduce, but anytime you have any kind of recursive function. And you've heard this before. Anytime you've done any sort of addition work in uh, school, you understand the concept of carry. We're just doing it in a different context. So now, let me ask another question. Since we're dealing with numbers and addition, is there any element in the set of numbers? that when combined with addition, gives you the same thing back? Well, there is, it's zero. So if I call or just add two numbers together, if I add zero plus one, it's gonna give me one back. If I add zero plus two, it's gonna give me two back. This is a special element called the identity element. So let's go ahead and go back to reduce and see how this all fits in. So the quintessential reducing exercise that pre people usually throw up is an array of numbers, and then they call reduce on it. And they usually have some addition function, which we just so happen to have, which is add. And then they usually start from some starting place, zero. Well, if you look at this, this kind of makes sense, right? Our starting point is going to be the identity element for addition with numbers and we have some reducing function. So if I write this out, or in fact, let me just go ahead and steal it from here. These two things are equivalent, by the way, that's why you can shorten it. But sometimes it's easier to see if I write the whole function out. So if we look, we have this accumulator. At first, this is gonna be zero. And then we have some value. But I actually want to change this parameter to give a little bit more context. Let's not think about this as value. Let's think about it as current value. Because the array is going to use reduce, it's going to run this function over every element in the array. So the first time, zero is going to be fed into accumulator, the current value will be one. And then the result of that will be the accumulator plus the current value, which will be one. That result gets fed back in to the accumulator. So the next time the accumulator will be one and the current value will be two. And so the result of that will be one plus two, which will be three. And since there's no more elements in the array, 
the answer will be three. So right now, I'm going to lie to you, and I want to tell you that reduce is generally used to tear a data structure like an array down into a simpler data type. So if you notice, we're going from an array of numbers to a number. You can say that we are collapsing the data structure in on itself. We're going from an array of numbers to something simpler. And the way that we do that is specified in your reducing function here. So before we look at another example, let me go ahead and toggle word wrap because I just realized that this is going to be hard to see. So let me do that now. All better. Very good. So let's take a look at that second example. In fact, let me go ahead and copy this example right here and just paste it below and we'll change what we need to change. Okay, so if you notice, the function that we have here, our reducing function, is generic enough to handle strings as well. So that's good. But our starting point is going to be a little different. So the identity element for strings is an empty string. Because an empty string added on to any other string just gives you the same thing back. So hello combined with an empty string gives you hello. And if you notice, strings also have this idea of concatenation. And we can use the plus sign. So that works out. So let's look at the truth. The truth is that really reduce is called the Swiss Army knife of, you know, arrays. And um, it can be used for just about anything. But I've lied to you and said that what we typically use it for is to collapse an array of elements down into a single data type, usually a simpler one. But that's actually not true. Um, you can use arrays for generating information as well and starting from a seed value. For example, you could use an array to generate a list of numbers starting from zero. But I think it's easier to understand arrays in the concept of reducing some set of elements down into a simpler one. So, just to reiterate, the reduce function just takes two parameters. It takes a reducing function, which is a function that accepts an accumulator and a current value, and it will return a new accumulator. The second parameter is an actual accumulator, right there. So the first time through the array, the accumulator is fed as the argument to this accumulator here. And the current value, right here, will be the first item in the array. Normally, the accumulator, to start off with, is going to be the identity element for the data type that is in the array. So for example, for strings, the identity element is an empty string. For numbers, under addition, the identity element is going to be zero. So, hopefully you understand a little bit more about the JavaScript function reduce. I will be doing future videos where I go into more concrete examples. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks.